What does a GPU actually do? Well, imagine you've got a massive colouring book, a really massive book, like wallpaper for the Eiffel Tower sort of size, and someone says, colour all of this in by tea time. Now, if you're a CPU, you're the kind of person who picks one crayon, squints at the first square centimetre and says, right then, red, neatly between the lines. Perfect. Now time for the next square centimetre. You're methodical, precise, and you're very, very slow. A GPU, on the other hand, is a room full of toddlers, each one with a crayon. No one's really talking, no one knows what the picture is supposed to be, but you yell red and boom, hundreds of pixels get scribbled on simultaneously. Some of it's outside the lines, but you can't deny the speed. Now that's because GPUs are built for parallel processing. They've got lots of tiny specialized cores that can all do the same simple thing at once, like adding colors to pixels or calculating the lighting on 1.2 million polygons so your video game doesn't look like it was rendered on a potato. Now CPUs, bless them, are like Swiss army knives. They can do lots of things and accurately, but try buttering your toast with the little knife that comes in the set and you'll see why sometimes you just need a proper butter knife, or in this case, a whole drawer full of butter knives taped together and slathering pixels in real time. And that's a GPU. It doesn't run your operating system. It doesn't check your emails. It's too busy turning triangles into dragons at 60 frames per second, unless it's also mining crypto on the side, in which case, Tell it to calm down. In short, CPUs think, GPUs colour in. And when it comes to graphic, speed trumps subtlety. So the next time your game crashes, don't blame the GPU, blame the toddler who ate the crayon. More of this from the nerdiest people you know at craigandave.org.